Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, welcome back to Gearcrest. Thanks for checking in today. Oh, I know. Um, so today, um, we're going to introduce you to our amazing dorking chickens here. So we've got little boy and little girl uh, here. Um, so first off, we want to shout out to uh, the amazing students at the Community Root School. Um, they gave the chickens uh, a fresh, uh, a nice house uh, paint, um, uh, giving a nice little facelift. Um, uh, so thank you to the CRS students. Um, and as you can see, currently um, we're housing our chickens in our Memorial Orchard. Um, and there's really great reason for that. Um, as you can see, we've got our rotating uh, fence system. We're gonna be moving them throughout the orchard um, because of course, they're gonna help to fertilize the soil. They're gonna be digging and, and being active, turning over the soil. Um, but also, they're really, really gonna help us control bugs. Chickens love eating bugs. So they're really gonna help us to uh, control on things like ants and whatnot. So um, we can help keep um, our fruit trees happy and healthy as well. Um, so a little bit about the history of chickens. So uh, chickens um, uh, originate um, in Southeastern Asia um, from, uh, for the most part, from a bird called a red jungle fowl. It's a gorgeous um, uh, sort of ancestor to the chicken, uh, but it only weighed about two or, uh, to three pounds. Um, so very, very different. Oh, sweetheart. Very, very different um, to um, the chickens that we think of today. Um, and they really became a staple um, domesticated animal because of their dual purpose. So you can eat them for their meat, but they also produce eggs. So you can eat uh, their eggs as well. Uh, so fast forward a couple thousand years, and that'll bring you uh, to the Dorking chickens that we have here. So the Dorking chicken is named after a small market town which is south and west of London, where a lot of chicken and poultry would have been grown um, and sold before it was shipped off um, to the markets in London. Um, so they're certainly known for their superb meat. Um, what makes them really, really unique is that they have a fifth toe, and I'll show you that here uh, in just a second. Um, but when we look back to the classical era, the Romans actually talked about um, a chicken that had a fifth toe as being really, really superb in terms of its meat quality. So the Dorkings are um, uh, likely descendants from uh, the Romans' really superb five-toed um, chicken. Um, another really, really amazing quality um, of the Dorking um, is that they have a really good winter lay rate. So again, your chickens um, are dual purpose. They're producing you meat as well as eggs. Um, but of course, uh, in the winter times, um, most chickens tend to slow down. Uh, but the Dorking uh, was actually known for its continued production uh, throughout uh, the winter months. So again, really great winter lay rate and, and superb quality meat. Okay, I'll give you just a second. I want to show off your colors. Um, so these in particular are silver gray Dorkings. There's a number of different colors um, uh, and different variations of the Dorkings. Uh, but these are really the more historically pre prevalent um, and historically re relevant ones. Um, so at this point, these guys are two months old you can really start to differentiate the males and the females. So the female, which you can see right there, trying to jump away, um, she's got more of that brown uh, breast. Um, uh, so she's gonna have less sort of color variation. She's gonna be more dull. Um, all right, we're gonna let you go. Oh, or you can stay there. Well, I wanna show off your little boyfriend. Um, so this right here, this is the male, and you can already tell that that sort of breast coloration is much darker in black. That'll continue to fill out, so we'll have a nice dark black breast, but the head will actually continue to lighten in color and will eventually become really quite white. Um, so real quick, I want to show off your cool toes, bud. So take a look there. See that fifth toe right there? That's really the distinguishing factor of the Dorking. Okay, big boy. You wanna hang out here for just a second more? Okay. Thank you for letting me pick on you. Um, 
So uh, finally, I want to wrap up and sort of talk about what makes a heritage chicken. Um, so the Livestock Conservancy has four main factors when it comes to defining a heritage chicken. One is that it has to be um, a standard breed prior to the mid 20th century. Um, so when we look at the Dorkings, um, they are actually in both the first British and the first American um, uh, poultry standard books. So 1865, the first British standard, um, the excellence uh, uh, standards in excellence for exhibition poultry. Again, that's 1865. And then the first American standard is 1874, the American Poultry Association um, uh, in their um, uh, standard breeds um, and uh, breeds of excellence. Again, that's 1874. Um, so they need to be an old standard. All right, the Dorkings were both in uh, the first of, of, of both of the standard books. Um, Two, they need to be able to mate naturally. Um, that's really, really important with these guys um, because oftentimes um, the males and the females, because we grow them for meat production, they have huge um, uh, breasts that make them physically incapable of actually um, having sex and being able to uh, mate naturally. Um, uh, you see the same thing with the legs. Sometimes the legs can be misshapen or misformed, um, so they can't physically reproduce. Um, three is that they need to have a long and productive life. Now that kind of is linked to the fourth one, but really what you're looking at is you want a chicken that's going to be able to live, again, a, a, a happy life. Um, so really that means five to seven years for a hen. It needs to be producing eggs five uh, to seven years to really hold those old historic qualities. Um, the fourth issue, uh, again, which is linked, is it needs to have a slow growth rate. Um, worried the wind's gonna take, take <laughs> my camera away. So it needs to have a slow growth rate. So that means uh, 16 weeks. So that means from hatch, to market weight, it can't be any shorter than 16 weeks. Today, the industry standard is eight to 12 weeks. So again, really rocketing these animals to as fast to market weight as possible. Um, but when you rush that development, um, the bones, the internal organs don't actually form properly. Um, so as we talked in the Heritage Breeds video, um, these birds would be grown to be processed at a specific time. They're not meant to live past that uh, processing date. Um, so again, when we talk about uh, living a healthy life, um, that really is also directly linked to a slow growth rate. Um, and today that excludes um, a lot of farmers. They don't want to get into heritage breeds because that means that's that much longer that they have to pay and um, uh, feed these animals. Um, whereas uh, today industry, you can have a uh, market weight chicken um, in eight weeks. Doesn't mean it's healthy, doesn't mean it's happy, but it means that you've got eight, um, meat in eight weeks. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Let's say goodbye to our um, uh, stowaway Muscovy ducks that uh, think that they're chickens now. Um, all right, we'll check back in later. Thanks for checking in today. Um, and as always, have a good one.